Let's do some fire breathing exercise, the astrika. So let's go uh, bounce up and down and breathe in and out. Take your legs to relax your calf muscles because when continuously you work, then tighten up your muscles. Now let's bring your opposite elbow to your knee, your knee to your elbow. So it's a slight twist. Breathe out as you bring it in. Breathe, breathe in as you bring it away, or you can just bounce this 30 times. Good, getting warm, warming up. Now let's do a few jumping jacks. Let's go for a minimum 20. Then you can go up. Let's go for about 40. But at least let's do 20. Breathe out as you go down. Thanks. A few seconds break before you do the next one, but not more than 20 seconds though. Good morning, Bahia. Ms. Melinda. Okay, let's kick sideways. Your right one, swing your arms also. How oh, with your legs, the upper body, your lower limbs go together. Let's do 30 of these. These uh, gentle bouncing using your joints definitely strengthen your joints. They make your joints stronger. Okay. Now let's go for marching. Right knee, your left knee, bring it high. Swing your arms from your shoulders. Good warm up. Now let's bring your upper body to your right and to your left, your feet slightly apart. Keep your feet stable. They don't need to move your feet only, your upper body. 
your arms parallel to your shoulders. Go to your right, to your left. Breathe out each time. And same way, you twist, but bring your arm behind this time. And your hand over your shoulders. Okay, let's do some lower body exercise also. I mean, more of twisting as well. So let's, uh, we are going to kick forward and then kick backwards. So when you kick forward, bring your upper body forward. When you kick backwards, bring your upper body backwards. So it's in. It's going to go in the same direction. So let's do front, forward, and backward at the same time. Forward and backwards. Same thing with your right one. Place your right leg slightly behind. Forward, backwards. Let's switch it. Forward, backwards. Forward, backwards. You can do twice continuously. So four. Sorry. Forward, backwards, forward, backwards, forward, backwards, forward, backwards. So that way you are going to, you might feel some cracks in your spine. Let's go forward and then sideways. So we're going to kick forward and then over to your right side, your left leg. Same way, your right leg forward and then to opposite direction. So forward, forward, bring your upper body in opposite direction also. Bring your right one. Again. So try to bring your leg when you bring it forward as high as possible first before you move into opposite direction. So there are two ways. One is going direct from here to your side. Second is go forward and then to your side. So we want to select the second option. So let's try doing this, okay? So if you are moving your right leg, place it behind. Forward and then sideways. Then right leg behind, right foot back. Left one forward, forward and then sideways. So this is going to open up your whole spine. Okay, let's stretch. Now, your feet slightly apart. Left arm up as you inhale. Go to your right side. And then exhale. Right arm up as you breathe in. And stretch. And breathe out. Breathe in. Come back. So you want to first start stretching with keeping your breath in. So inhale. Keep your breath in, stretch, stretch, and now exhale. Inhale, and then exhale. So with your right arm, breathe in. Inhale, stretch. So that way you stretch your spine better. Let's breathe in with your both arms going up. 
Stretch first. And then breathe out. Inhale. Go to your right side. And then exhale. One more time. Bring it in. Go over to your right side. Breathe out. Let's go over to your right, left. As you inhale. Out. And then come down. Okay, let's go in the position called table top. So make sure that when you bend forward, you use your only, only hip joints, not your lower back. In that way, you're gonna stretch your hamstrings, especially the base of hamstring. Let's bring your first, your arms apart. Let's go forward. <clears throat> Keep your arms upwards, not lower, but upwards. Keep your head upwards, your chin upwards also. The only thing you are doing is bending from your hip joints. Let's touch your right toes. Let's touch your left toes with your opposite hand. And look upwards also. So you're twisting. You are not only touching your feet, but you're twisting. After 20 times, let's place your hands in the middle. Now let's go back and forth. Left hand forward, right hand, right hand backwards. And you want to go slightly, not only the straight forward, but slightly over to your opposite side. Let's go with your left hand, right hand. So that means slight. <clears throat> that stretches your better. Let's place your hands in the middle again. Same thing with your, we are going to do with your both hands. So you want to go first start from the middle, forward, middle, backwards, then to opposite side means go over to your right side in the front, left side and backwards, and same way on the other side. So let's go first five times forward, straight forward, and backwards, one, two, three, four, and five. Let's bring your hands over to your right side, both hands in front, and then back on the left. Let's go for one, two, three, four, and five. Let's go in the front to your left, and then back on the right side. Let's go for one, two, three, four, and five. So that way you get better stretching. Let's place your hands in the middle. We're gonna twist. One hand in the middle, the right, left one, and stretch your right arm up. And look upwards towards your right hand. So this is a great pose for your lower back when you twist in bending position. Same thing over to your left side. Let's go again over to your right side. And 
and then left. One more good exercise you can do here for your shoulders. So place your left hand down, bring your right arm backwards, and then all the way forward, and then place it here, back next to your other hand. So let's bring the same arm forward this time first, and then up and back, and then place it back. Let's do with your left hand, backwards, upwards, forward, and then down. Now forwards, upwards, backwards, and then down. Let's repeat it with your right hand this time. Let's bring your right hand forward first, and then up, back, down. This time backwards first, upwards, forward, and then down. Let's do with your left one, forward first, up, and then back down, and backwards, upwards, forward, and then down. Okay, let's try with your both hands at the same times in this position. So that will strengthen your lower back and you are going to work on your shoulders. Bring your both arms forward, upwards, backwards, and then down. Now backwards, upwards, forward, and then down. Let's do it one more time. This time first, forward, backwards, and then down. Now backwards, upwards, forward, and then down. Okay. Let's walk your hands forward. Hips backwards. Going to plank position with the feet apart. Yeah, when I was doing this uh, exercise. And then let's go forward into upward stock. I'm sorry? When I was doing this shoulder exercise, when I lifted it up, uh, so I had like uh, pain on the left upper side of the shoulder. Yeah, so you need to do more to eliminate it. So I should do it more, okay? That's what I want yes. to ask. Should I do it or not? If it is pain, pain, then don't do it. If so it is just this... Like kind of a... So then I will keep it a little bit. Something of that sort, not pain, pain. Okay, then you should do it. Okay. Because that's how you figure out that there's something wrong with your shoulder when you do different movements. Otherwise, if uh, you don't do different movements and problem keep on building up and all of a sudden you do that movement, that's it. You got your muscle stressed or spasm or even uh, some type of injury. So that's why we need to do uh, so many different movements in different positions. So that's why you cannot replace yoga, which had so many different movements with any other type of exercise. So never think that you are going to do other exercise then you would not need yoga. That is completely false. Okay, let's bring your knees apart, your elbows down, your forearms down, and widen up your knees. And when you work with your different muscles in different positions, that what keeps you young. Okay, let's keep on bringing your knees apart. Then your chest down as you bring your elbows apart and chin on back of your hands. And this is a great position for your neck. We hardly used the muscles we're using or the position we have our neck in any other position. So this is the best position to bring your neck in. 
when it comes to backwards. And let's come up. So when you do this exercise, there's one more which is counterpose of this exercise, which we will do later. I'll show you what to do. We need to stretch your neck. Here we are, we were the back of your neck. We were squeezing and we should do also the stretching as well. Okay, we are going to go back. Let's we'll just bring you one foot behind, one forward. And then you want to go back. At least you should be doing all these exercises, different exercises. You don't have to do all exercises in one day, but you can divide in three different days in a week. So one day, some other group of uh, muscles you want to use compared to the other days. So do different exercises of yoga. Let's go forward again. <laughs> Let's go backwards again. Keep your head down. Let's, this is one of the exercise. You want to do the counter pose, the one we did before. You want to bring chin down, your hips backwards. Let's go forward again. Bring your chin up. Let's go backwards. Here, you want to do one more good exercise. When you're sitting in your hips, bring your palms forward, and then walk your hands towards your left, or to your left knee. So you'll have a good stretch of your lower back. And then go over to your right side, same way. So we have in yoga, stretching, stretching, only the stretchings. And we have strengthening, and then we have combination of both, stretching and strengthening. So we should do all of them, not only one particular group of exercises. Let's place your feet together. And swing right to your left, to your right, to your left. By the way, there's hardly, and they're, they claim that uh, there are few exercises that work more on pancreas for diabetes. But my belief is that it's not only one exercise, but we should do all different exercises to work on your different organ. So we cannot isolate one uh, group of muscles, one any organ, but we have to work with all of them together. So let's place your feet out and then bring your right knee, left knee, but they believe that any twisting exercise is great for your pancreas, which twist your middle part of your abdomen. So let's do this first. This is for lower back. You are keeping your feet apart. So there are two different exercises with keeping your feet together, keeping your feet apart. So this one is Keeping your feet apart. And second, let's think it's going to be twisting your abdomen. And twisting abdomen, they believe, is great for your pancreas. So let's bring your feet off the floor and then place your legs towards your right side and towards your left. The right, the left. And uh, 
Narendra Agni Sars. Agni Sars are great for your all the abdominal organs. We will we'll do that Agni Sar. We did. We usually do that also. Okay, Bhaiya. Thank you. Let's place your uh, uh, feet uh, in either cross position or one leg behind, one before. So see if you can place your one leg on top of other, one foot on top of other thigh. This is for half lotus. And even though they are twisting, but these are gentle twisting. If you don't have a knee problem, then we always should do light twisting for your knees. Otherwise, if they get stagnant and then we get injured quickly. Let's try the other one. Place your right one down, left one up. So always gentle, light twisting for your knees are great. Okay, now let's go place your hands forward, the palms forward. Knees apart, feet apart. So let's keep your feet apart. Walk your hands backwards and see if you can handle it. So be careful. You're working on your thigh joints. Let's go up. Let's come down. Let's bring your hands off the floor, the hips forward, and then your hands down. So be careful. So the width of your knees should be where you don't have too much of strain on your hip joints. Let's go up, but you should feel some strain on your hip joints. Let's come down. So start on the narrow knees, and then you can widen up gently, and then you come up, and down. Let's bring your knees wider, come up, come down, come up, come down. And now let's come up. Can you show this slide? Sorry. Uh, can you do this sideways so that we can see your side? Okay. Yes. So what I mean here is that your knees slightly apart, not too much, and then you go up, keep your hips off the floor. It's like going on your knees. Bring your arms up and then down. I'm going to widen up my knees more. So slowly, when they get used to it, the muscles start getting stretched. Then you can widen up your knees, go up, hips forward, arms up, and then down. Just make your knees wider. You come up, and then come down, wider the knees more strain you put on your joints, your thigh joints. So you need to be careful. You don't want to hurt yourself, but at the same time, you don't want to keep it easy either. <clears throat> so that's the aim of this exercise is your hips, hip joints actually. Okay, now let's bring your left leg out. You are on your right knee, five on sideways. On this side, I'm stretching my left leg. Five on the other side, so you can see for different angles. So we are stretching our left leg Come on your knee and on your leg. Okay, we're gonna stretch towards your right side, but you, there are two different exercises. 
One is going with your whole upper body towards your left foot. Other one is going sideways. So let's go for sideways. So let's place your hand on your leg. Gently slide it. See as far as you can go. Go down to your toes if you can. Upper arm up. For some of you, should be easy. Some of you, it's hard. And that is the story of the life. Leah, I have a quick question. Uh, I got my knee hurt, uh, not so bad, but yeah, I, I think I mentioned before also. So when I'm doing this stretch, that particular point in the knee is uh, like a little painful. I mean, not okay. painful, painful, but yes, I can feel it, but it aggravates also. So should I be doing it or should I be avoiding it? Which knee, the bottom knee uh, or the, the left, No, no, the, the left knee, actually kneecap, uh, how to put it, one point at, around the kneecap. Okay, you just don't want to do that if it is painful. Okay. But this exercise, you should not feel any strain on your kneecap. Yeah, it's like it the point I got hurt at, it's around the kneecap. It's like how to put it like... Okay, like then avoid it until it is healed. Completely? Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Ria. Okay, so let's place your right hand down. Left arm over your leg, and then lift your leg up. So you see if you can lift easily your leg, the muscles you use, we call adductor muscles. Actually, abductor, abductor. Let's go on your right leg. Stretch your right leg. Your hand onto your leg and then slide your hand. Let's go all the way to your foot. Other arm over your head. So more varieties you have of stretching or any strengthening, any other exercise, better it is. Let's go. Your hand over your leg, your leg off the floor, and over your head. Back. Okay, we are going to do a second variation of this exercise. You want to be, you know, make sure that the knee I have down has a cushion underneath it. All right, we're gonna bring your whole body towards the left foot, and we are going to go forward, your hands down, both hands down, hold down to your foot or your toes, pull your toes towards you. This exercise we do in standing position, sitting position, lying position. Okay, let's go on to your other side. Stretch your right leg, your upper body forward, to, I mean, towards your foot, your hands sliding towards your foot. Reach down to your foot with your both hands. and then come back. So if we do the same exercise in lying position, how you would do it, let's try doing it. Lie down on your back. And then we will do the same exercise in sitting position also, and then standing position. We do these exercises, but let's continue in different a, a sequence or in different frame of your mind. So lie down in your back, bring your left leg up, your upper body off the floor, reach with, with your hands, your leg, keep on walking your hands upwards as far as you can and see if you can reach down to your toes, your both hands,
and then come back. Let's stretch your right one. Upper body off the floor. Walk your hands towards your foot. Reach down to your toes. Make sure that if you are able to, keep your knees straight. And then come back. So now you want to do same exercise as we did um, on our knee, uh, the second exercise we did. Let's hold on to your foot in your one hand and then bring this leg all the way towards your left side. So you're holding your left foot and bringing your leg down on your left side. And bring it back. Let's hold on to your toes. If you can't hold your toes, reach down to any part of your leg. That's fine. Okay, let's bring it all the way down to your right side. And then come up. And then down. Before we go to do this exercise in standing position, let's do one counter pose. Bring your feet uh, not very close, but close to your hips. And the width of your feet should be the as width of your hips. And same goes with your knees. So your knees and your feet are aligned with your hips. Let's lift your hips up. Bring your arms up behind and then come back. Let's go up. Let's come down. Inhale as you go up three times. Go up and then come down. Since we are on the floor, Let's do one more exercise what we did in sitting position for your abdominal organs. Knees to your chest, arms apart, parallel to your shoulders. Drop your knees to your right side. Come back in the middle towards your left side. Back in the middle. Let's do five times on each side. Two. Go to your right side. Left three. Take your time. Your right. Left. Nice and smooth movements. Last one. So that means you are not rushing. And that means also you are not just relaxing only. You, if you do not act, Fast enough, you lose it, you become procrastinator. And if you act too fast, you become stressful. So it's a balance between both of them. All right, we are going to go down. Let's do same exercise in sitting position. So what we will do, stretch your left leg forward. Keep your left leg bent. So we are trying to follow the same what we did on our knee that you can do in sitting, in lying, and then we will do in standing. So let's go with your both hands forward. Hold down to your toes. Any forward bending also 
the, the leaf is great for your abdominal organs, such as your pancreas, your stomach. They go together, you know, stomach, liver, and your pancreas. They have a special connection. You know, there's a one duck that goes from your liver to your pancreatic duct. So we have to work with your stomach, we have to work with your pancreas, we have to work with your liver all together and intestines as well, because that's where the meat. All right, let's now twist. Twisting again is very great method or to make your abdominal organs healthy. There are two different types of um, twisting we are going to do here. So one hand, just keep your right knee down, right hand behind, left hand over your right thigh, and now twist. And our second way of twisting is bring your knee up. Now wrap around your left arm over your right leg. So now here, depending upon your body structure, I used to do it much better. And now twist. You're squeezing your abdomen, using your leg, and twisting at the same time. Some of you, if you are flexible, you can even bring your elbow over your leg. Switch your legs. Bring your right leg forward, left leg bent. Bring your arms up. This is the this is better way to go forward, and then forward, and then down to your foot. Some they say if we should do the first left side or right side. Actually, it doesn't really matter, but some believe that our intestines, they go down and then they go towards your right and then to left. So they say do the left one first and then right one first. All right, let's twist. Left one, left hand behind, right hand over your thigh. And twist. And now let's bring your knee up and wrap your opposite arm around your knee, around your leg actually, around your shin, and now twist. And then come back. Let's do the counter pose. And the counter pose we are going to do is lying on your abdomen. So abdom lying on abdomen and holding your breath in and then moving your body is also great for your abdominal organs. So now here, let's place your elbows down and place your palms under your jaws. So this is also great for your neck. This is the similar pose what we do each time when we have our chest down with knees bent on the floor facing downwards. And now let's do the great abdominal organs exercise, including your lungs as well. So what you're going to do, it works only if you hold your breath in. So let's hold your breath in and lift your whole body up and raise it off the floor. Oh. 
Excellent. Now we are going to hold your breath in and we are going to roll side to side. So hold and roll, raise your body up and go to your left, go to your right. I hope you are doing this, holding your breath in. So we are going to do is see if you are able to move back and forth also. So inhale and hold your breath in. And let's go forward like a seesaw, forward and backwards. So there's one more way you can do this exercise. You go to your right and left, but go all the way on your back. I'm sorry. Is anyone saying anything? Okay. So we're going to roll all the way on your back and bend your knees. So let's inhale, raise your body up. Go all the way on your back. Bring your knees to your chest. Shoulders towards your knees. So you stretch your lower back. Go into, this is called boat position. Inhale, roll over to your other side. All the way, knees to your chest. Go into boat, inhale. Roll on the other side. Bring your knees to your chest. Again. To abdomen. One more time. Inhale. See if you can, maybe not initially, you can roll without getting support from your arms. So that's what you should practice. When you roll from one side to another, just use your abdominal muscles and your lower back muscles to roll all the way to your right and left instead of touching your arm. All right, let's place your hands outside of your chest. Go into which is called Cobra, and then go into Child Pose. I want to give you another good exercise here. Make fist and put them on your base of your thighs, all the way below your abdominal muscles. Inhale, bring your chin up, go forward. And exhale. And then come up. So this is another great exercise for your abdominal organs and your lungs. Let's do it again. Hands down, your fist all the way bottom. Inhale, chest up, chin up, bend forward. <laughs> All right, let's place your palm down. Let's go into downwards dark. Yep. While bending forward, do we need to exhale or exhale at the end? First, you are going to keep your breath in. Huh? And when you reach to the point that you cannot go further, then you exhale and go further down. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay, let's go. This is a great exercise, Manila, for you. Uh, Dave? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I wanted to share something uh, beautiful experience with this Mandu Kasan. Yes. 
I had gone, I had my sugar, I don't, H1B, whatever, whatever, up, up the range where a doctor said that you're going to be doing, uh, I'll be calling you a diabetic, you know, if you don't control it with uh, cardio and diet and whatnot. And I said, all right. So with this other group, you know, very mild, lower level yoga, but Mandu Kashan was one thing we were doing. So we did that beginning of uh, this one, COVID, for almost two years nonstop. Every day we used to do that. So Mandu Kashan was there. After one year, my sugar came below the level. And in the beginning, uh, he told me that it's going to help with the, the uh, you know, the sugar the diabetic condition. And it did. There we go. So... Definitely, um, there are some postures are more effective than others. So since you mentioned uh, in Mandukasan, that basically what we're doing is squeezing our organs, specifically uh, the pancreas. So what I would like you to do, one, this exercise, we even do um, many times. So let's do this exercise. Uh, we are going to massage our internal organs, let's lie down on the floor with your legs crossed or feet together. So what you're going to do is bring your palms up and facing in opposite direction. So we do this because we want to keep all the fingers together especially your middle finger and uh, your ring finger and index fingers. <clears throat> so now let's place these, all the six fingers together on the right, right side of belly button, slightly below, it's a right angle, about an inch or so outside and then you want to press it down and then move it in circle. So let's repeat it for five times. And then you want to move slightly upwards and then move adjacent to it. Keep on moving after five circles clockwise circles. Go like a below your right rib cage. And when you cross, that's where the pancreas is. When you cross from your right to left, that's what the part you want to massage most if you want to work on your pancreas. So it's uh, like a middle of your abdomen, slightly towards your right side, slightly towards your left side. So keep on massaging that continuously. So this part you can massage for 10 times, 10 circles instead of five. So 10 circles, you can start repeating it. And then you can start moving downwards also. So this is another great exercise. And actually, Raz, this one should be more effective than even Mandukasa. So give a try. And Mandar, you also give a try. You want to move? This is your belly button, and this is the spot. You want to move it up and then towards your right, left, and then down. So that should be really effective. Let's do uh, Agnisar also. So this is called Sahaj Agnisar, when we move with your, our fingers. And uh, Agnisa is you don't use your hands, but we use our abdominal muscles to move back and forth, and especially the diaphragm. Diaphragm is between your chest 
and your abdomen. So this is that gun here. So we want to use that muscle to move your whole abdomen back and forth. So the way you want to do it is that you are going to inhale and then you are going to exhale fast and then move your abdomen back and forth. So I'll show you, I cannot talk why uh, we do it. So let me try showing you. So you inhale, exhale, And then slowly inhale. And let it go. So try doing this five times. You're so gonna inhale, you're going to exhale, move your abdomen back and forth, and then slowly inhale, and then let your breath come out. So let's do this for five times. So you, you can take a few moments between each of the round, you repeat. These exercises involve your breathing and your uh, some group of muscles. So that's why these are called kriyas. So this is kriya, Agni Sai is kriya. So now second way you are going to do this Agni Sai is you are going to exhale and hold your breath in. I mean, exhale and hold your breath out. Then tighten up your muscles of abdomen and then move forward and backwards. So the difference between the one we did and we are going to do is that the first one is with keeping your abdominal muscles relaxed and then moving back and forth. The second one you are going to do is make your abdominal muscles tight and then move back and forth. So let's do this for three times. Breathe in, breathe out. Tighten up your all the organs, like you're holding together everything, and then moving back and forth.
And there's a one more type of missile. You are going to do, Manandar, you are going to give a try all these exercises at least for three months and then check how effective it is going to be. So this time you are going to inhale and hold your breath in and then move your abdomen back and forth. So let's breathe in. And move your abdomen in and out. Keep your chin down. Whenever you hold your breath in, keep your chin down. So do it for three times. So, the yeah, exercise is... What is yes. the difference between this one and the previous one? I I felt both of them were same. <clears throat> Diaphragm breathing and this one. Yes, but the difference is between breathing when you have a breath, you breath out, then you have more space to move, you have a less stress to put on your internal organs, as compared to when you breathe in, your diaphragm is down and you are tightening up your uh, muscles and moving. So there is becomes different effect of it. So we, we are talking about three types of exercise. First is yes. like exhale, then like uh, move the stomach in and out. Second is like keep the breath inside, inhaled. And then with the diaphragm, uh, breathing, you move the stomach in and out. And third is just uh, inhale and regular movement. Yes, so two are with breathing out and third one is breathing in. Okay, thank you. And the these are Agnisar and Sahaja Agnisar, bringing your fingers together in line position when your knee, knees are being pulled down by gravity. Mm -hmm. So that means you're stretching your abdominal muscles and then you are massaging with your fingers, all six fingers together. So that is Sajak Nisar. Mm -hmm. So these exercises on abdomen, lying on the floor, holding your breath in, moving back and forth, sideways rolling, that's other exercise. And then Paschimottasana means bending forward and then twisting sideways. That is called Ardhumatsyandrasana. So try all these exercises together and see the effect of it. Okay, thank you. And, and share it. And Mandukasan, of course, like Raj says, and he shared his experience. So try all these exercises together, including Mandukasan means you have a, you made your fist, put them on bottom of your abdomen, in Vajrasan, and then moving, going forward. Okay, thank you, Ia. Okay. So that will be it for today. Let's um, breathe in and chant Om for three times. Oh.
palms together, then rest the heat, place them on your eyes, and gently move your palms away from your eyes. Thank you, and namaste. Enjoy your day. Thank you, Bhaiya. Thank very you, nice Bhaiya. Very, very good session. All right. It's different today. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you.